The idea of the evil eye, what's known in Hebrew as Ayinara, is the subject in Parshas Balak, because Bilaam's whole objective was to get us bad. He wanted to curse us, and it says in the Zohar that even when his curses were not succeeding, he still tried to turn another leaf, and he went into the direction of Ayinara. He went to look at us, and he tried to give us an evil eye in order that we should be hurt. And over there in the Zohar, he says that our blanket, our protector was that a Kodesh Baruch who covered himself on top of us, Kebiyochel, Kebiyochel, and he protected us from the evil eye, but especially because of Shevet Yosef. The Shevet of Yosef, who is Nimshal, who is compared to the fish, who are protected from evil eye, because they are Vayid Gularov, they are above, they're, they're submerged inside of water, and the water deflects the evil eye, so the eye is not able to uh, is not able to be obtrusive onto the Shevet of Yosef. So therefore, he is always protected. That's what, that's what we know. The Pasuk says that it says uh, by, he says, as Alei Ayin, Ben Porat Yosef, Ben Alei Ayin. He's above the eye. al Kopanim, he tried his best to get us and it didn't work. And that's why this Forno, if you look at this Forno in the beginning of the Parsha, he brings that he, Vayar Misham Am. He went on purpose and to, able to look at the nation. Even besides trying to curse, he also tried to stick some evil eye, what we call Ayin Aran, on top of us in order to actually destroy us. That was his objective, that was his interest, and Baruch Hashem, it did not succeed because of a Kodesh Baruch Hu protecting us. But at least we see from here something very important, and something still relevant for our days, that the evil eye, the idea of Ainara, is still relevant, it's no myth, it's not a legend, it's not some fallacy, it's not some idea, it's a mystical idea of the past, it's not just a legend, it's something that exists, it's something that's real, it's something that brought in many places in Allah, especially in the Gemara and Baba Batra, when people are neighbors one next to the other, but there's an idea that's known as Ayn Hara. And I wanted to describe how exactly it works, but especially I want to prove that it does exist. Ad Kedei Kachta, the Gemara in Bab Matziah, actually says 99% of people die from Ayin Ara. That's a scary Gemara. 1% of the people die, Bederech Eretz, in the normal way, and the other 99% die from Ayin Ara, meaning it comes from other people looking at other people in a very jealous in a very jealous and obnoxious fashion, uh, f- fashion, always trying to look at the other person, and that itself <coughs> goes and, and is mazik, that causes nezik, it causes some type of trouble or da- damage or even death to another person. We see already that Yaakov Avinu also told his sons when they went into Mitzrayim, he said to them, Lama titra'u, don't go all in one petach, don't go all through one Entry, you should go in 10 different entries in order to avoid Ainara because people are going to look at you. We know that the Gemara says that the Luchot Rishonot, because the first Luchot were given to us, the first tablets were given to us, only the Kolot Amin with a lot of noise and a lot of, it was a lot of thunder and there was a lot of a ruckus that was going on at the time. So that's why it ended up getting broken. That's why those Luchot ended up getting broken. As opposed to the second ones which were given Betzina, those are the ones that, that last. And this is the power of the Ayin and it exists and it's dangerous. And therefore we should never be one that possesses such a dangerous jealousy of someone else that looks in a very obtrusive way and not in order to, but it ends up causing some type of damage to the other person. How does this work? So I'm going to read to you, believe it or not, for many Rishonim and Achreinim that actually explain how it works. But before I read to you the details, I will explain to you that of course we know we are made of a physical body and we're made up of a neshama, what we call a nefesh, a neshama within us, our spiritual content that makes us alive and keeps us going. That spiritual content can come through your vision, through the power of the eye, by looking at someone else, and that connection that you make with the other person, through your vision, the light obviously bounces in to your eye, goes into the retina, the optic nerve bounces back, puts that that picture on your brain, and you're able to make a build a connection with the other person just by looking at them. We know there's such a thing as eyeing a person, which is exactly what Billam tried to do. By looking at someone else, he was able to build that connection, and by and eventually you can release some of the content within you, some of the kochot of the nefesh that's within you, of the nesham within you, and it's able to actually spiritually cause damage to someone else. That's how that's how it's able to happen. We know also when he wanted to give 
give a bracha. When Yaakov Avinu wanted to give a bracha to the children of Yosef, he said to bring them here so he could see them. Moshe Rabbeinu and Parsha Sosa bracha. Dafka stood the stood in front of them in order to be able to give over a bracha. He Dafka stood on top of a mountain, Harnavo, in order to see Eretz Yisrael because he was interested in seeing it. So why he wanted to see the beautiful land? He wanted to see where Yerushalayim is going to look like. No, because that itself built a connection. He was able to give a bracha to Eretz Yisrael, the bracha that we should be seeing here in Eretz Yisrael that came from Moshe Rabbeinu. So it only comes through this contact through vision, which can come in a positive or a negative sense. That's how it happens. Listen to the words of Rabbeinu Yona. Rabbeinu Yona is in Pirkei Avot and Perik Bet. Ainara, when it talks about Ainara and Yetzara and Sino Tabrit Motsimit Adam Onolam, what does it mean that Ainara could pull a person out of this world? He says over there that if someone is not Sameach with his Chalik, he's upset and perturbed about what a Kaddish Baruch who gave him, and he's busy Uyinit Chavera Shir, and he looks at there's a rich fellow next door, he looks at the fellow next door who has children, he looks at the good Shalom Bayi that the person has next door, or other interests, what he wishes he could have that other, that other person that I myself don't have, by using his stare, by gazing at the other person, says Rabbeinu Yona, Kasher Amru Chochmei Tev Ateva, just like the Chochma of Teva have said, the naturalists have said, that it comes from your mind and it's able to burn other things in, uh, outside of yourself. You're able to burn things out with your Ein Averav, Gam Bekir Bo Yisharef, and that will come back into you, it will reflect back into you and burn from within you a burning sensation, which we know a person can get red hot from such a such an afili. And that's the power of a machshava that can be mekalkel gufoi. It can ruin your body or someone else's. Ki katser rucha motziyato olam. And that will pull a person out of this world. As the Chazanish expands also, on the, on the, when it says, Havu Rabbanon, V'nach Ravshei, he says this in his Likutim in Baba Batra. This is written in the Sefer of the Chazanish, Likutim in Baba Batra, Simon Chafalaf. He says, what does it mean that the Rabbana can sometimes put their eye on someone and automatically he turns into a pile of ash or he turns into a pile of bones as Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai did? Over there he brings me Sodota Bria. This is from the basics of the natural world, of the natural phenomena of the world. That a person can activate hidden catalysts that are in the physical world. You can activate things which we don't see in the physical world, but it's in the metaphysical world. And your machshava, your mind, can cause destruction and absolute destruction. And to melt away solids that live around. Something that we would have never believed and understood how something like that could actually exist, but nowadays it's not very difficult to understand. We know that technology is getting even to a state that our mind can actually activate things. You might be able to move a car through your mind. Through your mind. You can be able to do certain things just by thinking about it, so to speak, but at least we know that even in the world surrounding us, we're surrounded by Wi-Fi, we're surrounded by vibes and waves all over us that we don't even see, and they're very real to us, because we like to connect to them, and that connection shows that even things which I don't necessarily see really exist. And that's the power that a person can pull out. The Sefer Akedorites in Parsha Tazriya, Iker Hezek Ayinara Bami Roya Meza comes from bad characteristics that causes major Ayinara and a tremendous amount of damage out in the world to people and the world around you. Because your Mabiti says by staring and gazing at something else, it comes out of the Tchunat and Nefesh from within you until your Mazik the Nitzutze Abato with certain sparks that come just, he says, like daggers and arrows and bullets that can go ahead and cause damage all over the place. Ki abata because when you look things in anger and upsetness, just like Bilam does, as he says, the Koach of Bilam was able to do such a thing, and that's how a person should always daven, he says, to be nitzel from such a chet. Also, the Tashbat Semelianavot says something very similar. It all boils down from this idea, but we should know, especially, you know, when we talk about other people getting hurt, we feel bad, but when we think about what they say here, it's, they all say another thing. It bounces back to you like a mirror. That's what the Tashbat says, that's what the say for Akeda says in the Rabbeinu Yonah, it hits and it bounces back like a mirror. It doesn't just go through like a glass. 
and therefore it comes back into you and it burns within you and it's left within you and even if you think you're solving something by getting rid of this person from the world it doesn't work in the end it just backfires it doesn't end up working as the Gemara says a person who's jealous his bones become rukav, they become dried up they become all decomposed because he himself caused it to himself and nothing else so of course we know from here that the more we look and we start looking at someone else and saying wow I wish I had that car and you're saying you know what I really could buy that car until you get to a stage and say that car is really mine he's driving my car that all eventually leads to a person never reading satisfaction you want real satisfaction in this world start realizing that what I have was given to me from a Kodesh Baruch Hu, knowing and keeping that connection Be'emet, when we say Shema Yisrael to realize in and from there you will be nitzel from all this nezik that we call Ainara. From you want to be from Talmidim of Bilam Arasha or Talmidim of Avram Avinu who had Ain Tova. Shabbat Shalom.